Hello there, everyone. No, welcome back to Satisfactory. I am Mercs Rain, and this is our cool ironworks factory, right? We make all the iron ingots. They come in this way, and then everything kind of spaces out, and it gets turned into a lot of other things that are being stored on the side. See? See? Check all of this stuff. And this is actually the coolest part of it. We're getting reinforced iron plates. We're getting rotors. And up top... We are now also getting modular frames. By the end of the last episode, we did not have the modular frames in place, but now we do. So up here on what is currently a roof will eventually be its own building, and I don't know if this is exactly how I want it to be laid out, but we have the rods coming in from this side. This side over here has the fancy reinforced plates coming in, and then we make our modular frames. We probably could have done this down on that level, but, you know, I feel like doing a little bit of verticality is fun. And then the, uh, they just come out, out there, down there, and into storage. Now, I'm not totally done with this building. I mean, we don't have all the floors in place or anything like that. And in fact, I still don't really like the way that the power lines just kind of clip through everything, and that's how we get power to our buildings. But it's a good thing that uh, I don't like it because there are ways around it. If we come in and take a look at the awesome shop, here in the awesome shop, we can see that there are wall power outlets. Ooh, yeah, tired of the bulky power poles? I am. So in order to do this though, we do need to have basic steel production, hub tier three, and we need to have this quick wire research. Well, we're prepared to do the quick wire research right now, so let's go ahead and get that done. Over here at the MAM, we have actually, we, we did the Caterium in the last episode, uh, but now we also, I made a whole bunch of ingots, I've made some of the quick wire itself, and now we're actually ready to do some of the next bits here. So this is going to unlock the zip line. I say we do it now. And now we don't actually have an official like location for the Caterium processing. Just a little tiny place. It's get you know gets deleted when it's not needed. Equipment unlocked. New equipment unlocked. We're gonna check it out real soon. But let's also research this one. What did we unlock here? Oh, the power pole Mark II, which is something that we had uh, looked into in the last episode can do seven power line connections. Hmm, maybe we spend a little time to get this as well today. What else do we got? AI limiter? Interesting. What's what's after that? The power switch, oh. Oh, I can't click that and look at it, but uh, I assume this is in order to like turn off a whole factory. A smart splitter, oh, that's interesting too. And this uses the AI limiter. On the other side, we have high-speed connector. Connects several cables and wires. Okay. That's how you get the power pole Mark III and a bullet guidance system. Homing rifle ammo. Super neat stuff. Currently, for processing the Caterium, we just have a very temporary smelter set up with a storage on one side to put the raw ore in, and then, of course, it turns the raw ore into ingots. With all that quick wire we just made, we can now research the power pole Mark II. Nice. We technically can make uh, this AI limiter already as well. However, the high speed connector requires plastic, which we have not started making yet. Unsurprisingly, the power pole Mark I takes the normal copper wire, and the power pole Mark II takes the quick wire. But I think today is the day where we start looking into how to get these fancy coupons. And that's going to mean we're going to need to build ourselves the awesome sink. Now we have everything we need on us right now to build one. I'm just going to build one in a spot. It's going to be basically right over here, and we're not going to feed anything directly into it from a machine. Let's just see how this thing kind of operates. Alright, so we need to give it power. That's not surprising. 
DNA points or standard points. Yeah, don't know really what any of this means yet. And then you print the coupons once it obtains them, I guess. Hmm. Okay, now that I've plugged it in, uh, we have some things here. Standard points until next coupon. 1,000. DNA points until next coupon. 1,000. Okay. So, it takes different sorts of items. You know, it would be really nice to see, like, how many points does this give us? How many points does this give us? I don't even have a way to say put this directly in. It looks like we have to run it in through a conveyor belt. So let's go ahead and test that just a little bit. Back in the storage box, I have a whole bunch of raw iron that uh, honestly I'm never going to process because our iron over there is pretty full. So let's just go ahead and drop this raw iron like right here and see what happens to it. Haha! <laughs> okay. Clearly, that isn't really how this thing works. Uh, I thought I had lined that up. I clearly did not. Here we go. Let's go ahead and put that iron in now and see if it gets processed. One point per iron. We only put 100 in there, so that's not really going to get us too much. Also, how much power is this thing actually utilizing? I don't see anything over here to say how much power it's taking. We check a pole. Yeah, again, from here I can't really even tell if it's using more than it was before or not. I'm going to toss in these screws, which go through multiple processing, right? The iron, the raw iron turns into ingots and then into rods and then finally into screws. So maybe this will give us a good chunk. Hmm. Okay. So two points per. It is better. I was maybe expecting more though. Now I'm going to be very interested to see does an iron ingot give us more than one point. If not, I mean the iron ore being raw would make a lot more sense. Then we don't have to process it at all. So I'm going to queue those up there. Oh, wait, it just started taking them instead, interestingly enough. This is still two points per item. All right, let's do a little math here. So a raw iron is one point. And it takes one raw iron to make one iron ingot. Okay, and one iron ingot is two points. And then we turn one iron ingot into one iron rod. We don't know how many points this is, but one iron rod then turns into four screws. And if these screws were two points each, two, four, six, eight. So we went from a single point iron ore into an eight point uh, pos you know, positive eight points because of turning it into screws. The screws definitely are better, even if each screw is still only two points. I would be pretty interested to see, like, what does a rotor count as? Because it takes so many screws and uh, the iron rods or, you know, our reinforced iron plates. Again, lots of screws and then iron plates. I'm sure these probably give a lot of points, but we don't get these very quickly and we're going to need a lot of them. So we're not going to be uh, throwing any of those into the... I mean, I'm going to call it a recycler. <laughs> I don't think that's uh, really what it's called, right? The awesome sink. But it's basically a recycler. Recycling stuff into coupon points. Now, check this out, though. Copper ore, just raw, not being processed into anything. We're getting three points per item. Hmm. We actually have a backlog of copper, so maybe we'll throw some copper into this thing. Like, processed copper. I mean, like these things over here, right? Look at all the wire we've got. We have quite a bit of cable, too. First coupon. Let's go ahead and print that thing.
got it. Let's go spend it right away. I did really want to spend it, but most things take more than one coupon. And you know, the thing that I think we want the most for our brand new factory is this wall outlet. So let's go ahead and get ourselves three more coupons. Okay, over here, I did put some of the higher tiered copper items like the wire, and it looks to me like it takes the item out that's just in the end. So whatever you put in last is what's gonna come out first. So that copper wire, look at this. It's six per item. That's pretty awesome. Not only that, but we have an extra coupon already re ready for us. With our recycler underway, right, I have this thought in mind. Wouldn't it be great if once something is done producing, like, for example, once we're done making copper wire, as in the storage is full, we don't want to just stop making it, right? Why don't we divert some off to the side and probably send it right into the recycler? I wonder if this is where the smart splitter comes into play. This might have the option. Again, I don't know. We don't have it yet. But it might be able to say, hey, you have to send all materials one direction. And when you can't send it that way, it goes a different way. And that would mean as soon as our storage fills up, it starts going off the other way into the recycler. If that's how this works, then we could we could really hook up a lot of our machines, maybe all of our factory parts into this. You know, most of our things aren't almost full, but the copper ones are almost full. So they would be the perfect ones to start with to divert extras off. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we need to get this. We really need to get this thing here first. So we need some 50 uh, copper sheets, I think is what that is. We have the wire we need, and then we'll be able to come down here and get make it on this thing. And you know, we really do need to make, now that we've made the iron facility, we need to make the copper facility. And this is actually one of the items that we do not currently have on automation. So back here at the MAM, here's the AI limiter. Research. Ba -da -da. Now we need 50 the reinforced iron plates which we have but we need 10 of those AI limiters so let's go ahead and see what it takes to make it also a supercomputer a programmable splitter ah you know what if this thing can't do what we want it to this thing might be able to we're actually getting into things that I did not realize this game had and we might be able to set up some really fancy automation going forward I'm assuming the craft bench is where we're going to find our AI limiter. Aha, there it is. It needs quick wire and copper sheets. That's not too bad. Not too bad at all. I'm going to get uh, more of these in our hands, and then we'll get some of these AI limiters. Smart splitter, here we come. All right, let's see. What does this actually do? Splits conveyor belts in three. You can set a rule for each output to decide exactly what part should go there. Hmm. We also need AI limiters in order to make these. But this sounds like if we were going to have multiple types of items all traveling on the same conveyor belt, which so far is not something we've done. We've kept all of our conveyor belts very um, singular. There is something that we researched, but then never looked at, and that would be the zip line. So the zip line takes a Xeno Zapper. Okay, we can probably make another one of these without too much problems, right? Quick wire, iron rods, and cable provides faster traversal in factories by allowing pioneers to zip along power lines. Activate the zip line and aim at a nearby power line to connect to it. Yes, let's get this thing going now. Craft the extra Xeno Zapper. Craft the zip line. This is very exciting. Okay, let's see how fast we can use this to get over to our coal power plant. You know, I have no idea. Oh, there we go. We jump up to it. No, I didn't want to 
switch. Okay. This is interesting. If I let go, do we drop? We do. Whoa. <laughs> you know, I don't mind this. I don't know if it's really any faster. And every time we hit a pole, it does kind of hamper things. And if our line goes close to the ground, it also hampers things a little bit. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm just not using this right. <laughs> It does sort of let you uh, jump higher than you might normally be able to. Okay, but now that we're here, there is a little something else I want to show you. We now have four of these coal power plants going. Pretty cool stuff. We uh, take a peek at one, right? Our max consumption right now is 184, but our max production is now 300. Okay, so we have enough co uh, coal all the way, like way over there on that island. It's a pure node, so it produces 120 per minute, right? So we have enough to power a bunch of these. When we look, these only take 15 per minute. Okay, so 15 times 4 is 60. Well, these here, these conveyor belt Mark 1s, could only transfer 60 at a time. So uh, that's our limiter. In order to upgrade these to the Mark 2, we need a lot of reinforced iron plates. We just don't have enough of those yet to get uh, the whole 120 over here at the same time. But if we had 120, we'd actually be able to have eight of these stations going. Now, we did need two, so we needed an additional water extractor. The uh, The first one can, can power almost three. It's very, very close. In fact, if we swim out here and we take a look, this thing is able to produce 120 cubic meters per minute. So 120 is what we're able to produce per minute, but this takes 50. So three of these machines takes 150, so we're 30 uh, cubic meters per minute short. So it does drain it. Uh, but that also means that two of these is producing more than four of them need. So there's a little bit of balancing work, I think, if we really wanted to try to optimize how much water we are pumping and everything, but this does work just fine for now. It's time to zip back and see how many tickets we have available. I wonder if I can, like... <laughs> this is so weird. Can I get up there from here? It doesn't look like it. That one little drop I had, it really made a big difference to us. Let me see if I can get back up there. I wonder if I can, like, jump over this, or what the best way is for this. <laughs> and then we overshot this one. Yeah, the zipline's gonna take a little bit of work to really get used to how it operates. Well, we have processed almost all the items in here, and we have five more tickets. Printed... Six total. That's going to let us get quite a few new tools. So first off, uh, this is our first purchase. We are going to buy the wall power outlet. So add to cart. Now, the next thing I want to buy are the doors. So we can actually put doors instead of just having a giant gaping hole in our wall. Add to cart. Yes, buy them, please. Let's go ahead and put a door on here right now, and let's make it centered, I think. Oop. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Okay, now then, we have a power line coming in here, so let's go ahead and see what it looks like if we try to place a wall outlet. There's also a double wall outlet. Oh, this one has one connector on each side of the wall. This is exactly what we want, not just the uh, single one. The single one's good for routing power around the inside, and the double, of course... Okay, I'm understanding how this works now. The double is for moving it into the building. 
let's get that right there. Okay. And then we can delete this line and pull our power in from that pole right to there. We can delete this. And from there, into all of these three machines that it was powering before. That's so much nicer looking than having the pole in here. Time to wire up the rest of the facility. And I just discovered a uh, another thing about these that's actually a pretty big distinction. So we had a pole here, and so it had one line coming in from the outside, and then it had three lines coming off. So that was four lines. But look, this one still has a fourth slot. In fact, each side has four slots. So we could actually use this to power one more machine, and uh, we're going to do that for this one right over here. I have done a good bit of rewiring. So everything comes in through this spot here, and this is the spot that we did put in place before, but now instead of that going directly to these machines, we have a hookup on the roof here, and in fact, let's go ahead and climb up so we can get a little better picture of what's going on inside the building here. So everything comes into here, so that's one connection in, and then we have two connections coming off here. And then we loop over to this one. This one here has one connection going there. And then we take this directly over to here where this one powers one, two, and three machines. Okay, everything on our bottom floor is now powered. We then run over here and we connect onto the wall. We try to keep it nice and pretty. We connect on over. We connect on up. And we connect on over. So we have plenty of space over here that we could use for other factory buildings if we want to. But you know what? We may actually turn this section over here into nothing and then build up walls over here so that we have not a just giant rectangle square building, but something with a little more definition. I think it could look pretty cool. Uh, for example, right, we could put walls here and then have it built up. And if we view this from afar, you'll see what I mean by giving it some different kinds of definition. Now, something that we haven't played with, really, that we probably should have, is colors. So, interestingly enough, when we come into here, there's now a customizer. We did unlock this, I think, in the last episode. Um, but on this thing here, right, this is the fix-it wall applied to walls. Uh, but we can come into the colors, and we can, like, select different things here. I don't know... I haven't played with this yet. I don't know how these work. I'm not super interested on in different colors just yet, but uh, it is here, and we may want to do that to break up the monotony of an entirely yellow-orange colored wall. Now then, check this out. So I'm putting just these cables in here. So two, two wires. Remember, these wires were six points each. So two of those turns into the cable. And if we look at the cable in here, Look how fast it's going. That's 816 points per minute. This is one of the next things I'd really like to get is this indoor lighting because it does get a little dark inside the factory, uh, especially right with uh, a ceiling and walls and no windows. But it does take steel and I, I guess we haven't really started the steel just yet. If, uh, if we try to go back, which is hard to do, Back in the architecture category, there are these slanted roofs, which are things I'd really like to get my hand on as well, because that's going to help us, I think, for the top of our factory. Uh, but, right, well, there's railings, and, you know, modern railings, industrial railings. I don't think we need these road barriers just yet. Maybe one day. Uh, but these ladders and the catwalks and stuff, I think these will be very, very helpful for our factory as well. Uh, because right now, if we want to get to the second floor, the way everything's currently designed is I have to make my way over to that corner to run up the ramp. That's kind of a pain. Wouldn't it be nice if there was a ladder, like right over here? Or a stairwell, something like that. Also, just crossing here. Like, look, okay, oh, oh, I'm stuck, I can't get through, oh, we sort of made it. Wouldn't it be so much better if there was, like stairs again right here that led up to a catwalk and then this catwalk walked straight across and you could see everything sort of from ceiling level that'd be pretty nice so roofs are six 
Uh, railings are, well, you know, we may not need the railings right away because these catwalks have it, but catwalks here are five or the industrial ones also five. Stairs are two. So, it, you know, if we wanted to get this, this is five, six, seven right there. And that might be good enough. Just look at the glory of our giant orange building. While tickets are generating right back there. This is something I've been wanting to try for a while. Productive Packer Deluxe. I have no idea what this is. Uh, I think this might be Tetris. Let's do level one. Okay, so it's timed. I'm making poor choices. That's okay, I think. I don't know if I can rotate. Doesn't feel like I can. Does that do anything? I guess so. Okay, send that. New high score. I think I played terribly, but it was my first go. And how many tickets do we have? Six whole tickets. Nice, that gives us seven. All right, we're gonna buy the modern catwalk, add to cart, and we're gonna be buying these stairs. Let's see what they look like. Oh, it's in the architecture. Yeah, I, I definitely understand how these are working. Uh, I think probably what we'll actually want, maybe the stairs left, right? And then we can get Another row going in right here. Is this high enough for our catwalk? I don't know. Catwalk straight. I do not fully understand the way that it does the clipping. <laughs> Why is it clipping through the foundation? So strange. All right, let me place that there. Is this a good location? I think it is. Is it high enough? Should we go higher? Higher might be too high. Or it might be perfect. The real question is going to be, how do we bring ourselves back down? And this might be where a ladder comes into play somewhere here, but uh, we don't have any ladders just yet. But I'm pretty happy with this so far. 
we'll definitely play around with this a little bit more and uh, maybe try those stairs all the way up to the top or something. I don't know yet. We'll figure it out. But anyways, we have a pretty cool factory building. Our very first factory building basically complete at this point. I'm pretty happy with it. I hope you are too, and I hope you'll join me in the next one. This is Merc's Rain signing off.